What's going on, everyone? The Bad Habits, aka TBH. Welcome to the shit ah. show. I mean, Madam Web. <laughs> Who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I just sat down. Oh, wow. Full disclosure, uh, this came out on Valentine's Day in 2024. As of this recording, that was yesterday. I highly do not recommend that you see this on Valentine's Day, a.k.a. yesterday. I know I'm speaking about the past right now, but uh, yeah. I myself was also on a date. I am in a relationship, so... Uh, damn, we should have saw Bob Marley. <laughs> I am so sorry, Bob Marley. We we, we did you wrong. And uh, to top it off, this is also, you know, Black History Month. So, fuck, did we make the wrong move here? Very quickly, I just want to say this is episode one of a brand new series that I've been sort of working on for a little while now. So I'm very excited to get into it. I gotta be honest with you, this was supposed to be just a standard movie review, but yeah, I gotta be honest, this is, uh, there was nowhere else for this to go, but immediately I knew this had to be the pilot for the shit show. Let's get started. I gotta be honest, I don't really want to get started, I'd much rather just eat this apple. Mm. Alright, we're gonna start off with a plot line. Full spoilers, be warned, okay? It don't fucking matter. Just just watch the review <laughs> and uh, leave a like, please. Thank you. Appreciate you. Oh, you're going to leave a comment too? Thank you. I really appreciate you. Seriously. Full spoilers. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm just looking at Wikipedia. Wikipedia has yet to update the plot line. Usually when a movie releases, they'll give you a full structure of the story. However, let's take a screenshot of this. Yeah. See that little fucking piece right there? Yeah, that's all That's all they're going to tell us. And it's the day after release. So, and I quote, Cassandra Cassie Webb is forced to confront her past while trying to survive with three young women with powerful futures who are being hunted by a deadly adversary. Oh, baby. In case you're wondering, yes, I have, um, <laughs> I do own a copy of The Amazing Spider-Man 2, TASM 2 as we call it. That is definitely going to be an episode of this series, The Shit Show. Best believe, that movie turns 10 uh, very soon, so I was initially going to do an episode of Old Habits Die Hard, where we go back and celebrate, you know, movies specifically around their blank anniversary. But I gotta be honest, this movie is, it's, it's too much fuckery in it, so it has to be a shit show episode. I brought it out just to let you know, I love cheese, okay? I love bad movies. More or less to me, it's a film, so I should be entertained at the very least, or, you know, I should take something from it. I take a lot from TASM 2, okay? Just full disclosure. I mean, <laughs> the amazing Spider-Man 2, y'all. This is, there's so much shit to go over in that film. I can't wait for that episode. But uh, one of my favorite things is the goddamn Autobot Secret Lab train car. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anytime I think about it, it's just hard for me to say it with a straight face. God damn it. A major plot line in that film involves Peter Parker. He discovers his dad had a secret lab in a subway that came out of the ground. Not only that, but it was in a train car. Autobots, roll out. Also, I brought this out because I'm one of the only people who have a copy of the Marvels. Now, full disclosure, I gave this a positive review. I said add it to the collection and lo and behold, what do I have here? The Marvels. All right, yeah, let me get back to Madam Web. So for this review, I'm gonna start off with uh, the cast. I'm gonna just start with that. Normally, I just go into pros and cons and shit, but let me do a little bit of setup for this one. Our main character, Cassie Webb, is played by Dakota Johnson. 
who probably doesn't give a fuck about this film or about this role. Got to be honest with you. She's written horribly. It's not her fault, I don't think. Uh, I don't know, to be fair. <laughs> but it's bad. I'm sorry. Our lead character is not enjoyable to watch. Next up, I have Sydney Sweeney, who plays Julia Cornwall. I gotta be honest, looks like she was fucking sleepwalking through this. Uh, she's normally a good actor, but I, I, it's just not working. I don't know. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, she, yeah, she plays a spider woman. There, it turned out to be three spider women in this film, so she's the first one. Next up, I have I Isabella Merced, who plays Anya Corazon, aka Spider Woman as well. Out of those three characters I just named between Cassie, Julia, and Arya, she's probably the best one, um, in my opinion, but it, it, it's still not good. It ain't gonna save it. And lastly, we have Celeste O'Connor, who's playing Maddie Franklin, I believe was the character's name. Uh, they are my favorite of the four main characters. I think this character has some of the best one-liners so few and far in between, but I'm trying here, folks. New York City is a whole new level of crazy these days. What do you want from me? What do you want? New York City is a whole new level of crazy these days. I might be mispronouncing a few names, but bear with me here. I believe this character's name is Ezekiel Sims, played by Tahar Rahim. Oh boy, I want to know what the original story uh, or plot line with this character was because almost all of his scenes is, you know, he's shot from behind or on the side. It's ADR, so they, they clearly got to the editing room, you know, after shooting the fucking film and they just twisted so many things. <laughs> There's times where you can see his mouth is not moving and you still hear the character talking like they are fucking bold, okay? I've seen better dubbing and ADR in Samurai Cop, okay? I mean, it's, it's bad. They just really don't give a fuck. Therefore, I don't. This movie is fucking lazy. Yeah, so all this dialogue is recorded in a sound booth in the editing room. Uh, next up, I have Adam Scott, who plays Ben fucking Parker. I mean, my nigga could have just been Benny from the block. But yeah, whatever. He's Ben Parker. It really doesn't matter except for, you know, <laughs> he has a sister named Mary Parker who gives birth to Peter Parker by the end of the fucking movie. Yeah, that's it. He's just there to be a, an uncle. And OK, you know, let me give him a little credit. He is one of the better characters in the film, but there's still not much for him to do. But, you know, his little he has a little bit of a charm to him, you know, that sarcastic humor. That's about it. <sighs> and then I mentioned he has a sister who gives birth to Peter Parker. That is, uh, she is played by Emma Roberts. There's nothing there. Just have a baby. Next up. So this plot line, as I mentioned, um, it's essentially one long chase. You know, Ezekiel is hunting this future spider woman because, yes, he is clairvoyant. And he's also... He's an evil Spider-Man. Let me just say this. It is super cool to have an evil Spider-Man. The concept, at the very least. It is not super cool to fucking waste them. There's no web slinging. He's just a flat fucking character. <laughs> it is bad. And his voice or accent is distracted. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend anyone who may sound similar. Forgive me there. But it, it was distracting immediately. The first fucking thing he said. I was like, what? I might need subtitles. And once again, that's not to be a dick. Cause I watch everything at home with subtitles. I watch YouTube with subtitles, okay? So yeah, full disclosure, it was distracting. And uh, it's a cool concept, but it's fucking wasted. It, it, you can't see what he can do. And the fucking story just evolves. I'm sorry, uh, his power set, it just, it just evolves with the story. Like, oh, well, he can do this now. It, it, what the fuck is this bitch bipolar or some shit? I 
I'm baffled. I was having a just not having a good time watching this film. I'm sorry, folks. Hope it translates to a decent review. I'm not trying to shit on this movie. Usually, I can get by with some shit. I mean, I'll pull something out of nothing, okay? I have a whole stack of movies right here, just off screen that you cannot see on this on this setup here. There's a few stacks here of just bad movies. I love them. This is not one of them. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not going to get a positive rating. Also, with this being a new series, The Shit Show... Uh, there's a new rating scale already going to be added to this. So, yeah, bear with me here. Cassie Webb gets her powers because her mom got shot while pregnant. And the forest people <laughs> revived her using some bullshit, stupid, ugly ass CGI spider. I don't know. You know, they were able to save Cassie, but not mom. Oh, man. That spider is fucking huge. At one point, Cassie's mother mentioned that it's just a small thing. Bullshit. <sighs> yeah, this movie in general, it just looks like shit visually. Um, I thought this was Madam Web, not fucking nope. Saw 4. It, it, it's bad, folks. Uh, you really can't get a grip on what's happening when the action starts. Whoever edited this film, just they, they fucking hate someone or there is a grudge against this movie. It's bad. And I can't believe that this shit really made it to the theaters. This this is a streaming movie at best. Either that or it's, you know, in the five dollar bin at Walmart. This this you do not waste your time. Heed my warning here. See Bob Marley. I'm sure that's better. I've yet to see it, but I'm going to really fucking soon, and I will do a review for that. Or at least I plan on it, assuming everything goes well, because, yeah, uh, that's a movie I really wanted to see. Unfortunately, I saw Madam Web because it was Valentine's Day and, you know, date night. So, hey, it's not all about me, you know? <laughs> This movie is reshot and cut to shit. It looked like the original version of Suicide Squad from 2016. But let me do a positive here. Uh, Cassie ends up manifesting her powers after an accident at work. Long story short, she's a paramedic and uh, she gets trapped in a car, falls into a river. Then there's this sort of Doctor Strange-esque sequence. It was really fucking cool. For about 15 seconds and i was like all right all right we it's starting to look bad we're starting it, it, we, we need to move on there really isn't a single action sequence or scene that really stands out in my opinion especially not the climax that is the worst of it and it's baffling how we even get to this climax which i'm not even getting into in this review oh my god i hope this review comes off as jumbled and fucking confusing as this plot line in this story because what the fuck fuck this movie man i got neighbors but fuck the neighbors right now it's a goddamn modern tragedy okay i'm sorry i hate to be that dramatic over a fucking movie they ruined my date night, okay? Full disclosure, I didn't get a piece of the cookie last night. My day started at 7.30 because I had to go to work that morning. It didn't get off till 6. And then it was immediate, come home, take a shower, leave immediately. It was a whole fucking mess. It was a great day overall. Um, I had a great time with my boyfriend. But this is not the movie we needed. I wish I could say they at least improved on the visuals that came from the trailer. But no, that's the real fucking movie. I don't think they changed anything. The Spider Women all look horrible. It's it's oh, I got goosebumps just by saying that. What the fuck? Uh, the movie's plotline it's it, it's just it's driven by laziness. It's super easy and convenient for the characters to just, or specifically, I'm sorry, Cassie or Ezekiel since they're you know sort of clairvoyant and they can see the future or possible outcomes whatever the case is it's written that way so that the characters can just okay we'll do it this way differently because we can just go back and reset it's 
you uh, when you have movies like this, you need to do a you, you need to have an interesting twist to it. Long story short, I'm gonna dispel the climax of the story about how you know how we defeat the bad guy. So if you don't want to hear that, maybe look away. <laughs> Keep the video playing though. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> long story short, um, at the climax of this film, it's on a rooftop somewhere. Don't remember. Doesn't fucking matter. It's in the trailer. Whatever. Uh, the bad guy has. All the spider women, the three teenage spider women, they're all in trouble. But, you know, their life is in danger. They're hanging by a fucking thread. You know, it's what's she going to do? You know, it's uh, it's Cassie Webb. Just she's given a choice. You know, who's she going to choose to save? Because, you know, as the bad guy says, you can't be in three places at once, except about, you know, 20 minutes or so prior <laughs> They established that uh, once she's strong enough, she can be in multiple places at once. So it's a very quick and lazy payoff. Essentially, he has her where he wants her. And then she pulls up, you know, bitch, watch me. That's it. And it's done. She, she saves all three and he gets crushed to death. But there's not a single cool interaction between protagonist and antagonist. There's, there's not. There's nothing memorable about it. In this film, it's just, it's put together very sloppily, you know. Uh, even at one point, Dakota Fan, Dakota Fanny, Dakota Johnson's character Cassie is driving through New York City midday. By the way, um, she has the three Spider Women in the back seat, and she is constantly just, you know, whipping it, looking back, talking, looking in the mirror, talking back at him, just anywhere but the fucking road. And it feels like she's driving for like a mile straight, just no issues in the fucking world it's little things like that that i i really won't forgive uh, i won't forgive the shots where you can see ezekiel's not speaking but we hear his voice fucking disembodied somewhere like this does this make any sense to you no it looks fucking stupid doesn't it and these motherfuckers uh since this takes place mainly in 2003 it starts off in 1973 and then it jumps to 2003. Uh, it, it, I will say it feels like 2003. It really does. And this is not a good thing either because they had the nerve to pull in Scandalous by the Pussycat Dolls. Do you remember those motherfuckers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that song is already owned by a horrible movie. It's okay. I don't expect you to know what I'm talking about here. I'll spill the beans. Catwoman, y'all. That turns 20 this year, so best believe there will be an episode of that one. You really don't want to remind people of Catwoman, so that is always a bad sign. And that song sort of leads into a diner scene, which is also in the trailer. Um, that little fight sequence you see with Ezekiel when he sort of just did that little flip shot they do where he jumps on the roof. That is about as clear as the fight scenes get right there. That is probably the best one. That one second of film, by the way, not the entire sequence. But a weird thing in that diner sequence I want to talk about is for some reason, the spider women teenagers, they sort of break off from Cassie and long story short they end up flirting with some boys and end up uh dancing on the table that the boys are sitting at you know these girls are in you know belly shirts they're teenagers you know boys reaching up trying to grab something it, it, it's, it's 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 uncomfortable it's inappropriate too it's like if if you want to have them do that just make them in college not high school i'm not saying that's gonna fix everything but at least it'll fucking help also at one point cassie <laughs> spins her own web and sort of funnels off elsewhere no these are stupid puns <laughs> sorry but uh yeah she's kind of splits off for a moment for self-discovery she goes back to the point where she was born uh you know where her mom encountered the spider and the spider people of the forest los aranas i believe they're called <sighs> she practically stumbles into the spiders then if i'm being honest you know i guess you could say it was 
ingrained within her you know her destiny to always come back and it was foretold but i just there was no struggle i don't even know why i'm complaining just move on <laughs> fucking defeated after this one it's been it's not even been a full day since i've seen this film man. It, it, oh man also, if you're a fan of Fast and the Furious, you know, particularly, I believe, the seventh one onward, where they invent or introduce God's eye, uh, you know, there's, this is a concept that's not new to films at all, of course. And what that means is anything with the camera or that's connected to a satellite is essentially a camera for a bad guy. And this is 2003, y'all. So they're getting 4K image quality from these CCTV cameras at the local bodega. You know, come on now. No. 2003? Uh, okay, yeah. So because Cassie defeats Ezekiel and she becomes Spider Jesus. Uh, fuck you, Deadpool. She's Marvel Jesus now. Uh, <laughs> you were wrong. I just want to be clear. I don't go into any movie wanting to hate it. Uh, I can handle a bad, good movie. This movie is just bad, bad. You know, they, they, they're not in on the joke at all. And <sighs> Sony, what the fuck are y'all doing? Fucking Craven's coming out this year and Venom 3, I believe, at least. That's what? Why are we still doing this? Besides Spider Verse, they're really goddamn struggling, and I'm sick of it. I just don't care. And I hope that Craven and Venom Three can lift them up somehow. But this is like the MCU last year when they started off with Ant Man. You know, did not start off with a bang. I just hope it improves from there because obviously I'm a fan of this movie, The Marvels. I really am. I, I, I just, I, I don't, it just, it baffles me, this film. So yeah, I'm going to wrap up this episode of The Shit Show. Episode one, the pilot, if you will. I'm going to give this movie a rating on my regular movie review scale. Here's a little bit of a caveat to this one. On that scale, it gets a rating of waste of damn time. No question about it. It almost got the lowest rating, which is fuck this movie. But there's a few times when I chuckled or, or laughed at how bad it was. I don't know. It, it just wasn't enough for a fuck this movie rating. It's close. Really fucking close. And for this particular series, the shit show, the new scale, we're adding fuckery. There's two levels of fuckery. Yes, I love fuckery. Fuckery can be good. Fuckery can be bad. Um, so there's there's high class, which is a good level of fuckery. And then there's low brow fuckery. This one's low brow fuckery. This one right here. X-Men Origins Wolverine. A fucking terrible movie. High class fuckery. Madam Web. Low class fuckery. I hope that helps explain the scale. It's bad, y'all. That's it, okay? I'm the Bad Habits, aka TVH. I want to thank you for checking out this video. Please check out some other videos on my channel. I'm always uploading a movie review. There's some gaming shorts if you're into that. You know, just please, I really appreciate all the support. It'd be great to make YouTube partner. Uh, we've hit little, we've been stagnant on subscribers lately, so you know, please do me a favor. It's free to you, and it would mean the world to me. Thank you once again. Deuces.